All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday afternoon, at least Monday afternoon here in Atlanta. Uh, great to have so many of you joining me. I see people popping in from all over the Internet, from all over the world. Uh, great to have you here. So for those of you who are new, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist here at Adobe, streaming to you live from the comforts of home. So with that said, uh, happy quarantine, everyone. I hope everyone is, uh, you know, all jokes aside, I hope everyone is doing uh, both physically and mentally okay. I hope that you guys are keeping yourselves occupied, keep yourselves busy and learning new things, uh, which is what we're aiming to do on these live streams is to continue teaching you things that you can use uh, not only while you're at home or quarantined, but also once this is all over, you'll have new skills to go back to work and go back out into the community with. So um, great to see again, so many of you here, I'm, I'm streaming like I think across five different platforms. So I'm gonna try and do my best to keep the chat going. Uh, I see people over on YouTube, Facebook, obviously, as well as LinkedIn, Behance, and over on Twitter and Periscope. So we got, got the whole house in right now. So what's this stream about? This is actually um, a problem I've had in the past, and I solved it like just by buying a third-party app on my phone. But I was like, there's got to be a way to do this in Rush. And what the problem is, when you're shooting a video... And it's act you're you're like it, the the orientation of the video at some point shifts, and you're shooting it sideways, and you really didn't intend to shoot it sideways, and it might be something that's too hard to shoot over again. You had a perfect take, you didn't even realize it was shot sideways until after the fact, until you're all you know just everything's uh, torn down, and then you realize video's great. It's just that it's turned the wrong way. Um, so you want to turn it the other way. Now, that's not saying I shot it in portrait and I want a landscape video, meaning I shot it in portrait on purpose. That's a different feature. That's actually a feature that is in Premiere Pro. And we, maybe we can take a look at that um, in one of the streams that will reanalyze and recompose the video in a different orientation. That's a different problem. I'm talking about a problem where it was a oops I shot the video sideways and I meant to shoot it tall or wide. I mean, all right. So in that case, let's go ahead and take a look at, um, let's go ahead and take a look at Premiere Rush. Now I could do this on mobile, but it just why mess with a smaller screen if I don't have to. So I'm going to show it to you on the desktop, but everything I'm going to show you will be the same, whether you're doing it on your phone, your tablet, or your computer. Rush has got the same tools across all three. So here I am in um, Premiere Rush on my desktop, but like I said, it will be the same no matter what platform I did this on. So the steps basically would be the same. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say create a new project, and it's gonna ask me where's the video I wanna bring in, just like it would on all the other platforms. And here's my, my oops, the video was shot the wrong way. This is actually a video of Victoria. Um, she shot it the wrong way, and again, it was just because of the way the phone was mounted. At some point it flipped and it wasn't supposed to. And she did this entire painting for 13 minutes and wasn't going to repaint it just because the video uh, had been flipped the wrong way. So we're just going to bring that one video in. And we're also going to say, uh, we'll give this a title while we're at it. I often forget to do this. Oops. <laughs> uh, painting corrected. All right, let's do that. And you can um, sync it with Creative Cloud so that... the that way, no matter which device you do create this on, the video would be synced across all your devices. So if you want to start it maybe on your phone on a small screen, and then you say, oh, you know, I want to do some more editing of this and uh, edit it on a bigger screen like a tablet or a desktop, uh, by syncing it, it would be available across all platforms that Rush runs on. So let's go ahead and click Create, and that'll bring in the one video that, again, is shot the wrong way. Now, since it detected it, as a tall video, it brought it in in a tall, um, a tall sequence. So basically, if I were to scrub through the video now, we can see her hand as she's painting this cherry. Great job, Victoria, but the video is sideways. And she was like, is there a way to turn this around? Like it should be 90 degrees to the right. Now, the first thing as a beginner, I would look at Rush and I would look at all the things around me and I was like, ooh, that looks interesting. This thing right here, change the sequence orientation, that looks like it's exactly what I need. But that's only part of the problem. 
that will, that is what we need. That, it, that will turn the sequence, but it doesn't turn the content. So we're going to go ahead and we will go ahead and apply that. Let's go ahead and flip it. And it'll even give you choices. Do you want to go from portrait to landscape to square? So I, do, I want to go to landscape because this should be a landscape video. And when I do that, I just have my same video in a wide format, but it's still a tall video. It's still not right. So let's go ahead and, and click on the video. Here's where that we find the hidden feature that, um, and I say hidden because it's just not something people instinctively know to go to. And the only reason I knew to go even look in this spot not that I read some tutorial, not that I Googled it, not that I saw someone do it. It's because this is also where I would go to do something like this in Lightroom. So in Lightroom, if I wanted to rotate a photo, it's actually done in the crop tool. So if I head over to the crop tool for, um, for um, Rush, the rotation command is there. And that's, that's, that's why that was the first place I went to look because I didn't see anything that looked like it would let me rotate the video. And then I said, well, maybe it's under crop just like it is in Lightroom. And lo and behold, that's where it was. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 90 degrees. And that will give me the video I want. Now, we could end the stream here, mission accomplished. That gives us our video. And we could have the shortest stream ever of six minutes. But <laughs> I'm going to give you a few more tips. Um, because first of all, not only if, if this was all you needed to do, you would then go and share the video to export it out. So you brought it in sideways, you created a new sequence, a new project, you turned it, you got it the right way. Now, in order to get that video out for whatever it is you were going to do with it, you would go ahead and share it and export it out to the camera roll, to your desktop on your computer, or wherever you were, at, whatever device you were exporting on, and then take it from there to do whatever it is you wanted to do with it. But Victoria does a lot of these um, uh, traditional paintings where she's speeding them up. She's making like a, a what do you call it, a, a, a time sequence. I, I'm, I'm blowing my I'm blowing my thought process here, but she speeds them up uh, so that she can make a, just a short clip of something that took 13 minutes, maybe down to one minute or 30 seconds or whatever. So that's, um, but wait, there's more. That's right, Bobby. But that's that's kind of um, one of the things we can do here. But I'm, I'm not going to speed up the whole video. We're going to do a couple things. We're going to add a title. We're going to search for a different kind of title. We're going to um, maybe slow down and zoom in part of the video so we can really get those detailed strokes. Now, I'm going to slow it down, but you would use the same procedure to speed it up. You would just go the other way. All right, so let's get the title in first. Now, right now, we're looking at this and we're seeing uh, we're seeing the entire video timeline. So there's the beginning, there's the end, and what I, and the, the playhead is at the beginning, um, and I can scrub through the video and see it all, but I want to go ahead and put a uh, title at the beginning. So I'm going to switch over to my titles here in Premiere Rush. Again, I would be doing the exact same thing on my phone. I'd be doing the exact same thing on my iPad. I'd be doing the exact same thing on my um, Android device if I had one. I'd be doing the same thing in all of those places. Hi, uh, Kyron. Welcome aboard. And I see people lurking over on uh, LinkedIn. Welcome as well. And I, time lapse. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Uh, Lynette's uh, said time lapse. And that's, that's where I had the brain fart. I couldn't remember the word I was looking for. But yes, absolutely, time lapse. Uh, so if you want to make a quick, uh, long video down to a short one, it'd be a time lapse. All right, so more titles here, and these are constantly being refreshed. These are titles in um, Adobe Stock, and they are just free. Most of them are free for to use. And you can already see the check marks on the ones I've downloaded in the past. And I thought, I want to use something different. For this, I thought, well, you know, since this is all about painting, let me see if there are any paint related titles. Who knows? You just, uh, worst case is I'm not going to find anything and I'll just use one of my traditional titles. So I search for the word paint. And lo and behold, three painting type titles came up. There's a lower third, there's a stenciled title. I'm not really trying to do stenciled, but then there's a background paint blog. That sounds interesting. And as you can see, I've already downloaded it on my other computer, but let's go ahead and use it here. So to use this title, all I have to do is just drag it right in. I'm gonna drag and drop it right in. The beginning of the video moves over so that I can drop it right in place. 
And if I were to play this now with that new title in place, oops, sorry, I skipped ahead. If I were to go back to the beginning, go back to the beginning and play that now, if we don't get our title, what happened? Did I not, did I undo that? Hold on, let me drop it back in. There we go. So now we'll go ahead and bring that over. And if we were to play that now, my blog channel tagline goes here. Awesome. So that is what, and then it would drop into the video. Perfect. That's what I want. Now, that little sliver of the title is kind of too small to work with. So down here on the scroll bar, if I were on my phone or my tablet, I would just pinch and zoom the, the actual play, the, the, the timeline to make it bigger or smaller. But we don't have pinch and zoom on the desktop. So I'm just going to go ahead and just drag this to make the area that where the playhead is bigger. So that gives me a bigger title. It's not changing anything about the title or the time of the video. We're just literally zooming in or zooming out. All right, so now that I got that, um, how do we edit this? Well, I can click on edit and that will let me change everything about it. I could change what it says. I could change the colors. I could change the font potentially. Um, yep, I got access to everything in here to be able to change it any way I want. But if you if you didn't do that, let's go back to styles and let's let's click off this for a second. Let's get out. Let's say you didn't even touch edit. Let's say you, you're okay with the color. You're okay with everything about the fonts and everything. You just, of course, want to change what it says. Well, you can go to the edit and literally drill down on each piece of this. Or you can just edit right, in, right on the canvas. So if I were to double click right on the text, it selects the text. Um, and I'm going to call it... Um, Oh, I think she said water. I think this was a watercolor um, cherry. We'll just call it watercolor cherry. All right. And this was, um, we'll put her name in. Not by me. This was by Victoria Pavlov. All right. You guys can go follow her on Instagram and Behance and all the other places. Twitter. All right. So anyway, uh, I, I've got her title in now. And if I were to play this just, just with that one change, I get a very cool looking animated title just like that, and it drops down. Now, put in the title at the beginning, do it all the time, but you have a choice. You don't have to put it at the beginning. You, you can put it over the video. So in other words, the video starts with the title already in play to kind of even make things a little shorter. So if I were to go ahead and just pick up that title and drag it up, I get an extra I get an extra space above the video and it creates that extra track for me to now put that title in right on top. Now, of course, uh, before it was on black, so the white tagline worked out okay, but now it would, might be a little harder to see on that white paper, um, so I might need to go in and change it. So let's say we did want to go in and change that. Now I do need to go to the edit because I need to be able to get to those specific components. So if I go down, I can say, oh, there it is, text color. And I can even go in and I can pick a color or I can even use the eyedropper to sample the color that's already there. So let's, um, since this is all about cherries, let's make it nice and red. We'll click OK. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so here we go. Oop, I keep clicking, which also moves the head. Play, and now we get our red text that's easier to see. If you wanted to make it bolder, sketch, with the watercolors. Now let's say right about here, uh, let's back it up a little bit. I wanted to take a piece of this and really zoom in and slow it down so you get to some of the detail. Now again, the whole point of this video is just to flip the video around. We're just adding extra little things on now uh, just to have fun. Hey, Crystal, how you doing? Uh, so now that I got the video, I got the, the video flipped. I got the title in place where I want it. I changed the color of the font. I changed what the title says. I went and got a stock title, all easy, drag and drop. Very easy stuff to do. Now we're gonna do a little bit of editing. We're gonna go in and cut a piece of this so that we can make it bigger and so that we can make it um, slower, just a piece. So to do that, I'm gonna start uh, back up a little bit and I'm gonna let a little of it play at full speed like that up to about here. And again, this is all arbitrary, just, just me guessing. So now that I've got that, that part of the video selected right there, I'm just gonna grab the scissors. Now, and by the way, just a tip, if you're doing this on the phone, because your phone screen is so narrow, you might have to scroll the tools left or right under the video if you don't see the tool you want. So if I click the scissors, 
That makes a split in the video right there. It doesn't change anything about the way it plays, but I'm just gonna take a section of this, maybe up to here, let's say right there, and cut that piece too. So now we haven't deleted, we haven't done anything. All we've done is make two incisions. Everything would play exactly the same at this point, but now we're gonna take that piece in the middle, the piece we just separated from the other parts of the video. And now we can do two things. We can grab the video itself, this, and it's only grabbing the piece that we cut out. And now we can, um, here, let me see if I can do that. No, I can't do that from the keyboard. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this bigger just by grabbing a handle and zooming this up. And then once I zoom it up, of course I can pick it up and move it up because we're really concentrating on just that part of the drawing. All right, so now that I've done that, um, and all it would do is just basically jump and skip to that. We can put a transition there if we wanted to. But now we're, we're zoomed in, and now let's say I really want to slow down part of this for those brush strokes. So then I would head over to the um, to the speed tab. I would click on speed, and now it's showing me a range. So right now the range is literally from the beginning of the cut to the end of the cut. But you can pick these up and move it. You can say, no, 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 I want to slow down the whole thing. I want to slow it down from that part to this part, or maybe back it up just a little bit. Yeah, that's the only part that I want to slow down. And right now you can see it's playing at 100% speed, so regular speed. Now you can just literally say, do I want to slow it down to make a slow, dramatic cut in this case to really emphasize something? Or do I want to make a time lapse? Do I want to speed it up and drag it to the right? So I'm going to drag it to the left. And by the way, um, if there were audio in this, then your audio is gonna get really slow too. So in that case, you might want to separate the audio, which is a new feature in Premiere Rush. Uh, you can right click, I think, and separate the audio, or you can go to the audio tab and separate it, or just mute the audio for this clip any way you wanna do it, so that you don't get a either very fast or very slow audio that would be a part of that clip. There's no audio in this, I don't have to worry about it, but if there were audio, I wanna take that into account anytime I'm speeding something up or slowing it down because the speeding up and slowing it down would also do that. Um, and you can do this on a mobile device. Did I understand that correctly? You absolutely did understand that correctly. There's Adobe Premiere Rush on iOS and Android. Okay, so now that I've got that um, selected, and I've slowed it down. Now I don't want it to just go and uh, and then start going slower. I kind of want it to slow down gradually to that spot and then um, be whatever speed I slowed it down to. So, or sped it up. So that's what the ramp checkbox is for. Oh, hang on, hit the wrong keys. That's what the ramp checkbox is for. So if I were to click ramp, you notice how that put literally a nice little ramp right there. So it's saying, I'm gonna play full speed and slow down instead of it being a, a hard stop before it changes speed. So I always like a ramp when I'm doing these kind of edits. All right, so let's zoom that out a bit. And now let's play the whole thing back up to that point and see what we got. Hit play, space bar for play. And we get our title and it starts to slow down. Slowing down so I can make it slower, I can make it faster, and then it's going to get to that, that little white notch there and then start to speed back up to regular speed right now, and then go back down to the regular size. So editing in Premiere Rush is literally that easy. It's, it's literally just you deciding what to happen when and where. You want to bring in more clips, bring in more clips. You want to bring in more photos, add photos. You want to add more titles along the way, go to your title area. You want to put transitions in, you've got transitions. So anything that you would conceive of is this easy on mobile, desktop, and cross-platform. Mac, Windows, Android, iOS. Uh, go get Premiere Rush and have a, have a go at it. Uh, it it's doesn't do everything Premiere Pro does. That's why there are two versions, two programs, but this is a lot more approachable, especially for beginners and people that are just getting started. Now, like I said, if this were my finished video, 
I would then go up to share. I would pick where I want to share it to. And on the desktop, you do get to share it to multiple locations at the same time. So I could actually share it out, make a copy for locally, make a copy for YouTube, make a copy for Facebook, make a copy for Instagram, and Behance. And I could turn all of those on. It would know the proper settings for each one. Um, and then I could also go into my advanced settings and choose, do I want it to be 4K like the original one that she made? Or do I want to downsize it down to 1080p or 720p to make a smaller video that's easier to share with people? Like, for example, there's no reason to post a 4K video to Facebook. Facebook doesn't accept 4K videos. Uh, so I would probably take it down to 720p, which is what most videos are um, in um, Facebook. And of course, there's a Facebook preset if you want to go do that anyway. But just so you know, you have your options to even go customize even just saving out a copy for yourself. So I could call this um, cherry painting and um, save it out in any way that I want it. And once I hit export, it would begin that export process, rendering it and saving it where I wasn't even looking, but saving it wherever I told it to save it to. And uh, that process will be as fast as your computer and the content you gave it and the effects you applied and so forth and so on. So rendering is always one of those things we hate waiting for, but the, it's usually worth the wait. All right, everybody, that was working with um, Professor Rush and flipping the video. But more than that, once we flipped it, we actually added some finishing touches to it. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for watching. Hang in there. This will not last forever. Famous last words. It will not last forever. We will be able to get out and about and see each other in person once again. But for now, at least you've got something that you can, um, you can play with uh, in the meantime. And all of your devices, even your toaster, shoots video now. So you have the ability to capture videos with so many different devices and play around. Uh, crop the clip so that it's only uh, the page. Crop the resolution. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Colleen. You're saying crop the clip so that it's only the page? What does that mean? Uh, crop the resolution. I'm not sure what only the page means. Uh, but you could crop it. You could crop a video if you want, especially if you're maybe doing a picture in picture and you wanted to crop a video, make one smaller, put it on top of another video, and maybe you wanted the one crop, you could do that. All right, so that's what the crop tool will allow you to do also, and that's what it's traditionally for is cropping. All right, Andrea, it was great seeing you earlier this morning. Stephen, no problem. Glad you enjoyed this. Um, and nice. Okay, David, thanks for being here. All right, so everybody, cheers. Go play with video. Premiere Rush, even if you don't have Creative Cloud, you can download a trial and play with it. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. Catch you on the next one. Uh -huh.